Welcome to the forge, my wanton wildlings. I'm your creepsmith, and I hope you like my work. Sometimes, things happen that we don't want to think about. Or, when we do, we think in terms of elaborate fictions. On the other hand, there are those times when the truth is worse than any BS that we can make up on our own. Tonight's attempt at anecdote, Eastside Lake, by Laughing Jake. There are woods just outside of Lapine, Oregon, where strange things happen when night falls. When the last shimmer of light from the day's sun fades behind the treetops, that's when you start to notice them. My father owned a cabin a few miles out of town. We stayed there often throughout my childhood. My father loved to fish, and I loved to go with him. We would go to East Lake and sit on his boat for hours, waiting for a bite. My dad was in it for the sport. I didn't so much care about the fish. I wasn't even any good at it. I was just there for my dad. See, he worked all the time, always having to travel to different parts of the state, so I couldn't see him as much as I would have liked. But when he was home, he'd plan these, these big adventures for us. We would stay in that cabin and hike the trails or collect agates that lay scattered throughout the forest. We had delved deep into a few of the caves that surrounded central Oregon, yet we only ever went to one lake. My father was insistent on it. He told me that the lake calls to him. He was enamored with it. He would just stare at the water, the sun's reflection glistening on the surface. It was hypnotizing to watch the water ripple in an almost rhythmic pattern. My dad loved to do a lot of things. Just about anything that involved the outdoors, he was fascinated with. But his fascination with that lake seemed to eclipse all else. He loved to nighttime fish. That's when he could get the lake all to himself. He would never allow me to go along when he went out at night, saying that it was the only time that he could really think. There was one night in particular that stood out to me from most. Recently having been laid off from work, he came home distraught. It was only me and him. My mother had passed away from complications of an appendectomy when I was three. Pacing around the kitchen, a heavy smell on his breath, which I would only later come to know as whiskey. That would have been my first sign of alert, if only I had been older. My mother was an alcoholic in her late teens and early twenties, and around the time she was pregnant with me, she had put herself in the hospital from alcohol poisoning. Had my father not been with her at the time, she would have died, and I wouldn't be here. It was during this stay in the hospital that they found out that she was pregnant. Both my mother and my father began going to AA meetings and following the 12-step programs. He hadn't had a drop to drink in 12 years. That was the first time I'd ever seen anybody drunk and I was too young and naive to know. Then, with not a moment's notice, he was grabbing his backpack and fishing rod and reaching for the knob on the cabin door. I was used to his solo fishing sessions during the night. I like to think that he was talking with my mother while he was out in that water. When she died, we scattered her ashes in the center of the lake. This, by the way, was where he had met my mother. That lake held more significance to me than I had the ability to comprehend at that age. These are things that I've only come to know in the years since my father disappeared. Things that now finally make sense. I had fallen asleep on the couch, holding myself as if cold and trying to warm up. I was pretty uneasy about how my father had behaved the previous night, and I thought he just needed some space. When I awoke, I was still alone in the cabin. I thought that he might be out chopping wood, so I flung the cabin door open and I ran to the chopping block. He wasn't there. 
Dad? I yelled, running through the thick brush that surrounded the cabin. I made my way to the lake, sure that he was out fishing, still thinking. As I broke through the tree line to the edge of the water, I noticed that his boat was in the center of the lake. I couldn't make out if he was in it. Uh, the, the, the fishing rod was still placed in the holders mounted on the rail of the boat. Dad, are you over there? Assuming that he had fallen asleep on the boat, the constant rocking of the vessel and the gentle wave of the water would have made anybody tired. I ran the perimeter of the lake to get closer, only to find nobody inside. I dove into the water, not giving it a second thought, and swam to the vacant craft. Taking a minute to catch my breath, once I got there, I went under the water a few times in an attempt to search the surrounding area, but even with adrenaline and worry, I wasn't capable of holding my breath for long enough periods. One of the forest service workers must have seen me out there alone because the next thing I knew, I was lying in a gurney with an oxygen mask on, gazing into the water as police loaded up their boats to search the water for my dad. My uncle was standing at my side and I guess I must have dove too deep and I couldn't break the surface before I ran out of breath. They never found my father's body and I hadn't been back to the lake since. I stayed with my uncle in Bend, a town 45 minutes from Lapine. All I could ever think about is where he could have went and why he would have left me. Ten years went by, each day passing in hopes of my father's miraculous return. I began to think about my mother and how I'd hardly known her. I could barely remember the time that I'd spent with her, but I could remember her face perfectly. I would ask my uncle questions about them. Hearing stories made me feel closer to them. When I was 22, I decided to go to the cabin. Maybe I would get closure, or at least understand my parents a little more. I hadn't went fishing since my father went missing, and I felt like he'd be watching me from wherever he was, smiling, proud that his boy was so much like him. I was on the lake for a good five hours with not much activity and what I did catch wasn't worth the effort to reel in. Then I retired to the cabin for the evening, walking to the room that I once called my own, letting out a remiss sigh as I peered through the doorway. I came to the conclusion that I would use my dad's bed. I had definitely outgrown my old room. It was time I felt more like a man. It was time I acted more like my dad. Laying my head on the pillow, I closed my eyes in a... I closed my eyes and started to slip into a place between dreams and reality. A faint creaking of the cabin floor barely audible as my slowly fading consciousness began. Each squeak acted as the metronome counting down my somnial departure. I couldn't tell if the creaking was real or not, but I, I remember feeling a cold wetness on my chest. I opened my eyes and beside the bed was my father. Flesh discolored a bluish gray, peeling from water rot and decay, his clothes tattered and soaking. D Dad, what? What are you doing here? I asked, my voice shaky from fear. He opened his mouth as if trying to speak, but only algae-filled water poured from it with a gurgling sound as if he was trying to breathe. I closed my eyes and said, Wake up! and then opened them to an empty room. I hung my feet off the side of the bed and placed them on the floor. A dampness pooled on the wooden floor. As the moonlight shined in, I could see it reflecting off of what looked like footprints. I followed them, leading me towards the door. I opened it with apprehension, my brain stirring with possible outcomes. Then, stepping onto the porch, I saw what looked like the back of my father merging into the brush just ahead, twigs snapping and leaves rustling as he moved out of view. I chased after him, coming to a clearing close to the lake. 
nothing. I walked to the trail, down to the docks, my father's boat not tied as I had left it. With the light shimmering on the water, I saw it in the center of the lake rocking back and forth. I jumped in and swam in the direction of the boat. I had almost reached it when I felt a tug on my pant leg. Suddenly, I was being dragged down below. I kicked frantically, hoping to free myself. Unsuccessful, I reached down to remove the obstruction by hand, and glowing yellow eyes looked back at me from deep black sockets. The face had skin peeled back from the lips, revealing jagged, shark-like teeth in a waterlogged humanoid face. A bony hand clamped to my ankle with bits of flesh hanging off of it. From the depths I could see more yellow glows appearing towards the bottom of the lake and starting to rise. As they got closer, I could make out dozens of rotten human bodies barely visible in the murky, moonlit water and kicked the arm a good few times. Finally, I felt it give, and I broke the surface of the water, not taking a moment to climb to the side of the boat and paddle to the dock. As I stepped out, I realized that a grotesque hand was still clenched on my ankle. I pried it off and threw it into the water. Running to my cabin, my only worry was to get the car keys and leave as fast as possible. I peeled out as I accelerated on the loose dirt that surrounded the cabin glancing in my rearview mirror as I pulled away. The corpse of my father was standing and staring at me as I left sight. The yellow glow of his eyes is still visible to me whenever I close mine. Oh, uh, if you're wondering, the creature described sounds like one of Norway's Draugr, the drowned revenants who simply refuse to lay down and die or maybe refusing to let go of the past, really can lead to some unfortunate outcomes. Either way, wildlings, stay scary, don't go swimming after that rogue boat, and make the most of your nights. <laughs>